so this month i'm moving back to food and uh, focusing more on some fundamentals of uh, illustration basically we've been doing a lot of very high intensity art so food uh, recipe illustration and uh, uh, travel illustration so it's been very packed but i want to just now slow everything down to focusing on your lines and shading um understanding of color composition shapes and things like that just the basics so it's a nice thing to pace down after high intensity workout so this time we'll again begin with the uh, how we used to do with just pencil sketching first then uh, translating color into tone and then uh, also mixing colors and then blending them or just application also. At the end of the day, you realize that all of these things help you in the complicated art stuff. And uh, when you're making something like fancy buildings or fancy food or a big presentation page, you wish that your proportions were better or you wish that your color application was better. So periodically, you should just stop everything and then focus on some fundamental or the other. So to start with, we'll just do pencil sketching of uh, all three of these items. And you can make them pretty tiny. So just along the top of the page, we can make these three items in which you will focus on getting the shape uh, accurately and proportions accurately. And then once you've got those, then we will do shading. Uh, in the true spirit of pencil shading, no eraser to be used at this point. So allow yourself to make multiple lines. Um, let your eye adjust from the lines that you've made to figure out what lines are accurate and then move from there. So if you want, just for variation, you can use a regular pencil, a clutch pencil, and one colored pencil if you want. So I, I sit with my colored pencils nowadays. So I can recommend that we can use a regular pencil for the avocado uh, or the lemon. Uh, either way, is clutch pencil for either. And then a blue colored pencil or a red colored pencil for the fish. So we'll be coloring all of these as well. So I'm looking at formatting my page such that, uh, or laying out my page such that I can make the avocado sketch here and painting here, lemon sketch here, painting here, fish sketch here, painting here. So we can do the same. And of course, we can change the orientation. So since the fish are upright, you could always sketch them upright like this and then paint them upright like this. But because it doesn't matter whether you hold those ingredients upright or sideways, it won't matter in how the layout looks on paper. So to start off with, I would uh, first is please don't divide the paper with lines. Those lines land up looking so ugly. You can visually just decide that, okay, I'm going to make my avocados in so much space and work with just that. So I want you to focus on your sketching and your sketching hand. Uh, I'm not too concerned about whether the avocado turns very accurate or not. Now, we've done this in the last month's class. Lots of complicated stuff where we were focusing some, uh, a lot more on the illustration, the final illustration, and how we arrive at it. So in this case now, I want you to sketch holding your pencil really far away. Keep your hand light and make your hand move in multiple directions, trying to suss out what would be the best orientation for your subject. 
let the lines flow from one object to another, from the object in the foreground to the object in the background. And once you're comfortable, you can start darkening the lines. When you darken the lines, try to see these things. This is what, this is the crux of the whole sketching uh, technique. Look at the distances you have marked from all sides of the object. And that will give you an idea of accuracy. Have you placed the object accurately? Then... Is the size to proportion? Is the shape? Now, this is not a circle. It's not an oval. It's got some point over here, some end over here that is slightly spiked. And you can start shading. And while you're shading, you will start seeing the object more clearly. There are all sorts of subtle highlights happening over here. There's a, there's a very distinct highlight over here. And then a light pigmentation around the highlight. That is not the highlight, but the color of the avocado seed has changed. And this entire process, I'm not taking my pencil, my hand close to the pencil at all. I'm holding it back and I'm just moving my fingers. There's some physics in this where I don't know how many of you are into well, good physics or science students. The further you hold, the less work you have to do. There's something about work and uh, I remember this and I, I like how levers are used. That if you have a long lever, you need to move it very little. And if you have a short lever, you need to move the arm a lot more. My dad's an engineer, so he keeps um, uh, giving me all sorts of gyan like that. But it really helps to understand. When you come close to the object, then you can make these lines holding the pencil a little closer to the neck. I want you to focus on gliding the pencil on paper and gently grinding the pencil in the right space. And observe how tedious it is for your hand or how easy it is for your hand to achieve that. Keep changing the direction of the pencil also so that you can reach every little crevice of the paper. Just stepping away for a minute, I'll be right back.
So after you've shaded the seed or the pit, review the lines you've made around again. I have found that in drawing these shapes, like a continuous circle or um, a line in the in an odd direction, everyone seems to have problems. Even I do. So you would you would probably draw a line like that and try to get away with it. But I'm going to recommend that you can draw a line back and forth the entire uh, length. So keep adding or keep pushing that line further. So the dis difference in these lines is uh, when you make a line like this, where you build one on top of the other, So you push one line to the uh, to keep going forward versus you keep going back and forth and then expanding or extending the line further. There's a certain ease you get when you, you do this in one motion. Also, when you set this as a direction, maybe or maybe in the opposite direction or in a direction that you're unfamiliar with, something like this. Once you set this, you can turn your artwork around and make the line in a more convenient uh, position. So if I want to make a line from here, but it's a very unnatural direction for me, if I turn this around, I might get my proportions wrong. So I will ma mark the area and then Turn the book around and then make the appropriate shape. And the original sketch lines will help me to make it in the uh, direction that is more familiar or more comfortable to my hand. Now here's another thing that is a challenge. Being able to shade this section without blending So I want you to just barely touch the pencil and move it in um, at an angle, either a straight angle or at, at a slight arc and gently overlap previous lines. Then go over some of those in another direction and again very gently we are just using one uniform thin uh, sorry weak pressure to fill this up and in the process we will create this gradual shading along the edge i know you might think that br bringing out a blending stuff is so much quicker and you can finish the job fast but for this exercise, it's not about just getting the job done. It's being able to do it under uh, certain limitations. Here the limitation is the, uh, the unavailability of a blending tool. This one exercise, if you can do for as many objects as you can think of, will exponentially improve your sketching ability like nothing else. The, this exercise of using your lightest pressure and shading a graduation or gradual shading without using a blending stump. As you come towards the end, you can firm up the lines and start building in the external texture. Uh, Pragya, are you here? Do you want me to help you 
with the uh, exercise yeah no i'm listening to you i'm trying to follow all right okay so i'll tell you what we've been doing we are going to make these three items the avocado the lemons in the dish and the fish uh in two mediums we will first practice pencil sketching and then we are going to paint it in watercolor so if you are sketching i the instructions that i've given everyone is to focus on uh focus on the uh the sketching uh, i mean your hand and how your hand moves when you are sketching rather than accuracy of your illustration so the manner to do this is to first start off holding your pencil really far and making broad strokes and then you start shading again holding your pen pencil far away so that you can get a uh, better control and you just use your fingers to do the shading and as you start doing details you start coming closer to the tip of the pencil and then fill in those details all right yeah yeah no okay. so it's more important that you do the exercise of holding the pencil far seeing how comfortable your lines are then coming closer and then shading it then also shading with the lightest pressure and building up texture so that you can get a dark to light uh, va variation without having to blend and all the extra lines that you see over here can just remain you don't have to do anything about that so i'm coming up with very harsh lines somehow like they're very distinguishable as lines yes um did you just sharpen your pencil yeah oh. yeah that's okay so which means that you can just reduce the um pressure Okay. Reduce pressure and first move very slowly and very deliberately so that your lines are sitting right next to each other. However sharp your pencil may be, if you are applying too much pressure upright, then you will start getting lines. And mind you, there's nothing wrong with lines also. Let me show you one shading where the same technique of holding your pencil far away and um, shading with lightest pressure can also amount to lines so in this case i can show you how the lines will appear position position so i can create my texture with lines but it should be a deliberate um, I mean, that, that's something that you should want to do. It should not be accidentally. And with lines, I can keep changing the direction of my pencil and make those lines darker and darker. It gives us the same effect. What you want to do is um, just don't rotate the pencil. Keep Keep it down in just one orientation and keep rubbing it against the paper. And before you know it, you will get a blunt tip. And that blunt tip will then help you to get a finer lines which are very close to each other and are overlapping almost imperceptibly. Next to watercolor, I think pencil sketching is also a scary prospect for many people. No?
and it almost seems as if for many people i think they think pencil sketching is totally avoidable because it's supposed to only be the preliminary sketch that you do with pencil sketching If you look deeper, you'll notice that even in the shadow of the avocado, there are there are different shades over here in the pit. And in some places, the shadow appears darker. In some places, lighter. Some places, even there's a highlight very close over here. And then to make this all very convincing, we will make a nice fuzzy shadow. Like you see, cast shadows, make a nice fuzzy shadow of the avocados. Now to make them fuzzy, after you have made the shadow to the tone that you see, you can just take a little bit of that and come outward with a very outside just on the edge just shade a little bit on the edge to make it fuzzy made it too wide. So when you have an even block shaded like that, you can keep rotating the book so that you uh, can shade in different directions overlapping this. This is, this is a very nice exercise to practice your light-handed shading. Now, after you've evened out the, the shadow, you can start increasing the intensity by adding pressure.
Okay, now shall we move to the lemons? This one I'm going to make with a blue colored uh, lead pencil. And uh, because a lead pencil can make lines better, I'm going to practice shading with just lines. This is going to be a little simpler, briefer than the earlier one. Now, we don't see the whole plate, but for our sketch, we can make the whole plate and ignore that glass of lemon juice or whatever they have made. So we don't have to worry about the picture composition, just the composition of the lemons in the plate is going to be. So we start off with a circle and then the, place the lemons where you see them. So you have a, an edge in the plate. There's a rim. Now, when you're drawing these lemons, instead of going directly to draw the shape of the fruit in its final form, look at simplifying it. So either we can draw ovals or you can also draw a rectangle because that's much simpler to draw. And lemons, you will notice, have uh, the end, the edges or the sides are often uh, pretty straight. So proportioning objects using simple shapes like squares and rectangles is quite easy, rather than even ovals sometimes. Once this is done, then you can start fleshing the lemons out. So make small lines. And like I said, go back and forth over a line till you are comfortable with the line. But don't make lines like this. So you, there's a difference in how the line is made. Go back and forth, like back and forth like this and keep pushing the line further. Shapes like these are very difficult to make in one shot. So it's fine to make them in smaller lines. Aditi, you know, is the lead pencil blue color? Yes, yes, this is blue. Once this is done, you can check if the shape of your plate is fine. And you can make the plate more accurate. Now, circles are best drawn if you rotate your circle. In one orientation, you will see your circle as a circle. And the moment you turn it around, you will see it as an oval or sometimes even squarish. But as you move it around, it starts becoming more accurate. Now, for shading over here, you notice that a lot of the dimensions are better visible on the plate. So you can start this with shading the shadows first. Mark the edges. These subjects are very good. Obviously, this is called still life, whether it's a photograph or whether it's a, a, a painting. Still lives uh, are very good to study and uh, practice composition. Uh, 
uh, light and shadow, color, composition. So what colors look well with each other, all those. Now, in this case, I am using lines to shade only because it's easier to draw lines with a uh, clutch pencil. Although I can make very smooth textures also. This is just the different things that we can do with pencil. No? Now, here I'm just going to imagine a line of shadow going like this, running through and coming to this side. And along the edge, there is a highlight, so I will definitely keep that. This little highlight will convince the viewer that the plate is three-dimensional. And then along the edge, how do we make this shadow? Just make these lines radiating outward, inward, but the line quality must be very smooth. So this looks a little odd right now, but the moment I add some horizontal lines, things will start becoming better. Uh, this is the edge you've drawn right round for the plate or only suggested part of it? I the double line? Mm. No, no, only, okay, on, the only, only, only on the okay. Yeah, only on the shadow side. That's only that's the only place I see it because on the other side there is no shadow to demarcate the the top, the flat lip on top. So when we're making circular shading, you don't really need to make circular lines. You can make horizontal lines and keep changing the angle of the line and they start becoming like arcs. And then of course you can put a few dots over here for texturing, that always works. Same thing with lemons. Ignore the bright yellow color and just put in the shadow. The yellow of the lemon and the different dark shades in the lemon are pretty much just as bright. But the shadow is quite intriguing because you have a, a reflection on of the plate on the lemons. That is a very special light. That gives the every object uh, its roundness. Now this this highlight is not always present. A clever lighting artist will do that so that there is a, a like a cast shadow. There's a cast highlight from the object surface on which the object has been placed. All right, now the last one is the fish. 
So I'm turning this around sideways. So I'll give you all a minute. I'm just going to walk out and come yeah, back. Can you just give us five minutes, please? Yeah, yeah. Take your time. Take it. Okay, how are you doing? Okay, before we move on to the fish then, shall we try painting these first? So we need to draw the same things again to paint them. Oh, I completely forgot. The avocado also has a shadow. The seed. So I was wondering why it's looking so flat. Okay, shall we paint the avocados now? Now using this reference, you can paint them about the same size. This time you'll be able to draw them better, I think.
Again, use the same technique. Use small shapes first. And all the guidelines are already there. Like this avocado is only as long as about the, uh, this line goes a little further from where this line ends. So are you able to draw holding the pencil really far away? So one one thing that I was telling my student yesterday, she, she has a dif difficulty drawing. She has difficulty letting go. So one thing to remember is when you're drawing lines horizontally, hold the pencil vertical. And when you're drawing vertical lines, hold the pencil horizontally. Normally, we hold the pencil only in one way and then we move our whole hand like that. Trying to control the movement of your hand, which is very clumsy and bulky, so that you get very nice, easy, flexible lines is near impossible. Only a robot can do that. You can do a much better job by holding the pencil far away and in one direction and then making it do all sorts of stuff for you, just using your fingers. So instead of taking your hand all over like that, which you have to do holding the pencil here, close to the tip, you hold your pencil far away, you can keep your hand anchored, and then just keep moving this. The other advantage is you are able to see more of your painting if your hand is not obscuring it. So you don't make uh, errors in judging spaces. You can see everything much clearer. Also draw the shadow space. And before we start painting, we will draw the plate of lemons as well. Use the same technique for drawing. Draw the squares or rectangles first and then draw the fine tune the lines.
All right. Shall we start painting now? So since we have limited time, let's abandon the fish for this exercise and use the remaining space to note down colors and color combinations. Now, in order to paint the uh, lemons, here's one nice way to make this look like a quirky illustration, but still fun. You can gently mark out a weird shape for the highlight. It's not a, an oval shape. It's a, uh, like an unfamiliar polygonish kind of space. And then around that, you will mark the, or outside of that, you will mark the place where the shadows will come. Now, these lines will be visible through the uh, color. And they can give a very interesting effect to your picture as well. So here's the thing with practicing um, painting or any kind of practice you do. As much as possible, try and insert something new and unfamiliar or untried on it's like a gamble, but also a test because these little things can become a personal style. You don't want to have, I mean, everyone wants to have some kind of recognizable style of illustration. It happens quite naturally, but it can also happen with a little more conscious effort. So in this case now, we are retaining all our pencil lines that's one conscious decision and the other place where we are using very visible lines to demarcate highlights and shadows and let's see how that looks so i'm going to first put down uh oh wait a minute there's more shadows we have to also make the cast shadow And the other shadows, if you want to, you can also draw those like we drew in the earlier sketch. All right. When you're painting these, now remember, we may not paint them all like a smooth painting. That can be very difficult in watercolor so don't even bother with that let's start with first mixing the colors and applying what we think would be a convincing i'm trying starting with lemon first so this is a lemon yellow mixed with gamboge this could be the second color that we use the first color could just be our lemon yellow yeah, this also I've added a little bit of gambage because lemon yellow can look very greenish. But I would encourage you to paint with the colors that you see and translate them as your eyes see them. So I'm applying the second color. And then pulling it down. to which I will add a little bit of yellow ochre. And as I pull the color down, it will become deeper in one shot. So that's a yellow ochre mixed with lemon, lemon yellow. Sorry, it's too dark. Now for the highlight, we can't leave the highlight blank. So it's got a little bit of 
um, lemon yellow. And we leave it at that because in the rest we have to make a deeper shadow which can be yellow ochre and orange and that too can be blended in Now in application, choose the brush according to the size of the painting you have. Don't use a very small brush because you, your paint dries very quickly in that. Don't use a very large brush because you won't uh, uh, may not be able to monitor the amount of paint in the brush. And you can also try an experiment where you paint the whole object minus the highlight in one color and then paint the second color on top of it after it dries. So here's that technique. The lemon yellow gamboge 2 mixture. I'm painting all over. When we were in school, we had to give this elementary intermediate exam. And in that, I remember our teacher had told us that for all fruit and flowers, fruit, vegetable and flowers, you should give a wash of lemon yellow. So I found that technique quite interesting because it helps to pre prep the paper for the next color that comes in and makes the paper very, or the uh, second application very rich. So in this case now, I can go over these lemons a second time with the same color, or I'm going to try this one thing where we have added a little bit of gamboge to the lemon yellow. And I am going to make these slightly almost geometric shaped lines. Just place the lines or the um, color on the lemon without actively blending. A little shadow here as well. And see how this looks. Now, interestingly enough, our lemon plate is almost the same color as the avocado. Making avocado 
color can be a little tricky because in our heads this looks like a light green color which is true but in order to get that light green color we are going to have to mix a, an odd set of colors and that could include some blues and some browns and stuff as well so here i've mixed some uh, sap green with lemon yellow this can be a very bright color so i have mixed a little bit of yellow ochre in that now here's another thing when you are mixing colors don't make one large puddle make multiple puddles so you can see if your color is headed in the right direction it could very well happen that if you want make one big puddle suddenly uh, the color becomes too green and then you'll add another one then it'll become too blue or whatever now the i don't know if this color would do i think it will do so i'm just going to paint that on the side and test it once and this color will look different after it has dried so i have to wait and watch this is sap green plus lemon yellow, plus ochre. In the meantime, I think I can use the same color with a little bit of cobalt blue for the plate. And it can be slightly unis piece also for the plate, it won't matter. And I'm going to paint it all over. Sorry, Aditi, can you just tell us what is that green combination again? Yeah, it's sap green, lemon yellow, and yellow ochre. Okay. Now, when we're painting a shape like uh, an odd shape, like the back of these lemons start off from a, a narrow point and treat this like a wash so keep pulling it down in this shape and don't allow the edges to dry and then rotate the book and repeat the process on the other side. Wherever you can possibly flatten your brush so that you cover a large area. Avoid going back and forth in the same space over and over again because that will lead to patches. Use a big brush for this application. And as you come towards the end, evaluate how much paint you have in your brush and just um, stop loading the brush just in time so that you can finish the end without having any extra color lying down. So this color was... Sap green, lemon yellow, yellow ochre, plus ochre, plus cobalt blue. Now, while the paint is wet, I'm sorry, I, I hadn't realized this before. You can throw in just a tiny spray of some thick burnt umber by tapping onto the plate. Some of it will fall on the lemons, but it's okay. So this will spare you from painting each and every drop. 
And in some places, you can also do that. Right, the avocado color has dried here, and I think it looks fine, but it could do with a little more of the yellows. So I'm adding yellow ochre and lemon yellow first. And to that, I will add the green. The same color can also be achieved by mixing cobalt blue with lemon yellow. And I can take a little bit of this bluish hue to dull my avocado color. Now this color we can paint on the entire avocado. Adding a little more lemon to the front. See how that changes things. And you can use the darker shade to just trace a line along the edge while this avocado is still wet. So just carefully drop this in. Don't overwork it though. In some places, if it is not blended, you can make a second round and uh, then just remove the excess color and go along the edge. That will help you blend it. Now, when we're making the shadow in the pleat, I want you to make it not with a deeper uh, green color, as you might think we should do. I want you to make it using cobalt blue. So here we may not have, we may not get that smooth line, but that'll be fine. I want you to try this technique of brush manipulation. You've already drawn that line. So as you go along, we press the brush down so that you get a nice deep color in a shape. Now, don't add anything else there. Now, add the shadow over here behind the lemons. So, you, you will get slightly um, sharper edges on your shadows, which is not how you see in the photograph. But this is, again, like I said, another effect that you can enjoy. And then use the same color for the cast shadow.
Aditi, ma'am, can you repeat this color, the play which you are using? For the shadow? Yeah. It's a pure cobalt blue. Pure cobalt blue. Uh, Pragya, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm just I'm doing good. <laughs> okay, all right. If you have any problems, feel free to ask. Huh? Yeah, so, yeah. I've... Now for the avocado seed, we can start off with a wash, but a blended wash of yellow ochre and then a blend of, this is like all, all sorts of reds and browns that I have. So there's scarlet, crimson, light red. To that, I'm going to add a little bit of burnt umber and a little bit of yellow ochre. Again, not mixing them together to make one giant puddle. And the application is fairly simple. I could also apply it all over, but I am pressing my brush down to apply the color in one weird circular shape towards the top right. And then Mixing the second color along the periphery and pulling it away. There is a little too much water. I think I could do with a lot less, but it doesn't matter. I can come back in a second um, layer and do the same. Now, wherever there's a highlight, you can leave that part unpainted. Even if it's a very gentle highlight, leave the highlight part unpainted. Paint everything else. And then with a damp brush, you can go over the edges and fill in that light or very um, non-dark shadow. So these effects often look very odd until the whole picture is complete. The same effect you can also achieve by picking up color. So you can, one second.
Okay, sorry about that. Yeah, so I was saying when your color is wet, uh, you can lift color also and that will leave a nice white edge, uh, a small, slightly tinted space that can be used as a highlight also. Now we'll use the same cobalt blue color to create the depth in the seed, uh, sorry, the pit left by the seed in the back. We've already shaded over here, so you know where that is. And you can first start with the dark area. You can keep changing how much pigment you have also. You don't have to fill the brush with fresh pigment. And the, the shadows also are different. So there's a deeper shadow over here. So I should wait until this dried. Let's see how this looks. The same thing can be done even on the pit a stroke like this over here for shadow and along the base. So instead of making a dark green or a dark uh, black or gray shadow, you when you change color, suddenly it looks very uh, vibrant. For the I'm using a combination of sap green, viridian green, cobalt blue, and a little bit of burnt umber. I'll show you the color. The very nice, deep, rich green color. So here we have sap green plus viridin. Plus cobalt two. Plus burnt umber. Oops, that's gone out of frame. Uh, it looks very really dark on screen, but it is green, I assure you. And we need very little, so you can use a thin brush to go around the edge. Just run a, a brush line along the whole edge. Here, our inability to draw very crisp lines with a brush comes in handy because you don't want a smooth line. You want a line which is going to be slightly rough. And some places it's going to be thin, some places it's going to be fat, and also. Some places it will be bumpy. So this is a way you can turn a disadvantage into an advantage. Now here also there's a little highlight on the skin of the avocado. And in this case, instead of keeping it white, you could use a little bit of cerulean. Give a slight cerulean wash. And then as it dries, you can paint the avocado skin color around it.
and that will make it look like it's a highlight. See, so it doesn't, a highlight doesn't always have to be white. And of course, the last part, we can just paint a nice flat cobalt blue for the shadow here. Now, after everything is dried, if we evaluate, I think my avocado color could have been much lighter. I could have had more yellow in it. Um, so I can experiment. I can make another avocado on the side to see if that works. Mm -hmm. This is slightly better.
And the lemons, actually, I've forgotten to put in my shadow color, which is this one, lemon and ochre color. Hmm. Still, the 3D looks quite nice. So the fish, I think you all can try. And uh, next week, I want to do liquids again. So if you have any favorite or not so favorite liquid items that you'd like me to help you draw, you can share them. Beverages, um, glasses of oil, water, all sorts of stuff. Okay, any questions? Do you want to share your work? No, not really. No? <laughs> oh. Not no, no. Not I'll, I'll be able to help you if, you, if uh, you feel there's some places you need help. Very nice, Ritika. It's looking lovely. I think today, uh, you know... Uh, when you said uh, we have to do the shading and, uh, you know, I mean, my mind somehow consciously was like, you know, okay, I'm, I have slowed down. So, you know, my hand could not fasten up, you know, my <laughs> breath was slow and I could not fasten up. Okay. I mean, I tried when, whenever I used to go, I could realize and then it used to come back. No, I have to just go slowly with my fingers and I could realize uh, how much difference it created today. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Back in the back of this page, note it down. Hmm. That you yes. consciously either telling yourself or what statement worked. So the hmm. next time you have to do that, it, it will help. It will help. Yeah. I mean, I, I, my breath was like, you know, it can't uh, go up. It was like, no, it, I cannot go up because your know, speed is like this. I have to be like this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> good. Very nice. Very nice, Alka. Looking good. So at uh, since you I agree with what Ritika said because I was trying that I'm falling behind. I was going so slow. <laughs> I'm like, wait, 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 I have to catch up. We've been doing a lot of very fast work. So I realized that we it's nice to do a chill chill month once in a while. So the pencil chasing is really nice. Like I love it. Hmm. Just black graphic pencil. Cool. Uh, Pragya, you sure you don't want to share? It's okay because all these guys have been coming now for four years, so you can't uh, they you can't compare with them. But maybe I can help you out. I'll I'll try to finish it and share it on the group. That's fine. Yes, that that sounds good also. Oh, you did it, Susan. I thought you were uh, moving about. Nice. Oh, <laughs> dedication. Wow, this is amazing. Please advertise about class in that space. If you have more than 10 people, please tell them, look, you can also do this thing. Okay, cool. All right. So next week, uh, liquids. So you can send me pictures. I would really like to make some translucent, transparent liquids with ice or um stuff like soup maybe where you can see something below that uh, that can always pose a problem so if you think of something similar put it on the group and then we can look for similar images all right see you have a nice day bye bye, -bye.